Uh, kyphoplasty is kind of a different procedure, and I guess this is one that's been developed over the last probably 10 years or so. And this is for compression fractures. Uh, it's, it's a uh, problem of elderly people with osteoporosis, but you also see younger people too, where they get a fracture of the vertebral body, they get pain because of this. In the old days, we would just say, live with it, it'll get better in three months, and you'll be fine. And to some degree, that's true, but a lot of people have lingering pain, and sometimes people have severe pain when they can't move or walk or anything else. The other problem these fractures cause is what's called kyphosis. You see older people kind of walking like this. The reason is, is that they get compression fractures that kind of um, compress the anterior part of their spine, and they kyphose. And so that's a reason to do this procedure in some, some examples. The key to this operation is a balloon which has a lot of force and you put it in there and you blow up the fracture site. So you start with, with a fracture and you do it in the operation, patient is face down, two little nicks in the skin, two little needles go in. You put, the, put it into the spine, you put a little balloon in and you blow the balloon up, elevating the fracture to a more anatomical, anatomically correct size and then you make a little void in there and then you place your bone cement, and then that's all you do. It takes about 15 minutes. People go home the same day. Most people have complete relief of pain. For this, you can play golf the next day if you wanted to. This would not be a huge recovery. I wouldn't recommend that, but technically you could. The cement hardens that quickly. The cement hardens by the time the patient is turned over from the operation is as hard as it will ever be. Wow. They, they've designed this cement in a way that it gets hard very quickly. You have a probably a 10 or 15 minute working time with it. And you put it in a certain viscosity, and you put it in, it gets hard, and then it just doesn't, it doesn't need to get any harder. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, go ahead. You diagnose that with an MRI? You diagnose it somewhat with an x-ray. The problem with x-ray is it can be an old fracture or new, it's hard to say on an x-ray. So you do get an MRI, and on the MRI you can see it's a new or old fracture. So generally, yes, you do have to get an MRI, that's a good question. So, so if that cement, uh, for some reason, didn't properly get in there, would you shave it off the same way you'd be shaving off the bone, or is it harder? No, you can't, you can't get into that area to do that. But one of the complications of this operation is the cement can go into the spinal canal around a nerve. In that instance, yes, you do have to do that. That happens yeah. pretty rarely. But if you didn't like where it was in that particular body node, you wouldn't have a chance to do it that way. Yeah. So, and and it's, there's not really a need for that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, an example of a patient I had. She's a real estate agent who came in. He was absolutely miserable. Miserable for months. Couldn't stand, couldn't walk, could, couldn't do anything. She was just, just really miserable. So got an x-ray of her back. And you can see here, that looks just a little bit funny. The other ones look kind of nice and square. That one looks, looks not quite right. And I was looking at those, well, that's a compression fracture doesn't look that bad. But just to answer your question, you get an MRI, and suddenly you see it just kind of light up right there. That is, mm -hmm. That's called edema in that. It's acute. You actually see a little bit of a fracture here, but this is where the money is. And so uh, on her, in her surgery, this is looking at a lateral view of the spine using fluoroscopy, you actually use two planes, but this is the lateral plane. So this is the, the start. Uh, put a little needle in, and I say a little needle, it's actually a pretty big needle. But you put that in <laughs> bone. Um, drill a little pilot hole where the balloon will fit down in there. And then this is the balloon, so the balloon is actually between here and here. And then you kind of blow it up and watch the magic happen. If you watch the tube body, it just expands out. <coughs> And then you put the bone cement in there. And this is kind of where most of the fracture was, so that's where the cement's going to go. A little bit of the cement goes into the other parts of the body. So did that procedure, and she never came back. So I had no idea how she was doing. <laughs> so one day I was putting together this lecture, and I said, oh, that was a good case. I had a good anatomical restoration. And I said, I don't, know, I don't know what happened to her. So I called her. She goes, well, hey, Dr. Ward. And I said, well, you never came back. She, I didn't know I was supposed to. I said, well, how did you do it? Did it help you? He goes, oh, yeah, I went back to work the next day and never had pain ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good to know that, but, but you know, 